What's up guys? It's Chris with Irene Iron Fitness. We are boondocking in southern Utah and we are going to do some food prep today using our thermal cooker. So keep watching. Thanks for joining in guys. As I mentioned, we are boondocking right now in southern Utah. We are about 15 minutes from Bryce Canyon National Park which just did a soft opening recently. So we went there and did some hiking on Thursday and Friday and took advantage of the very little amount of people there and it was truly amazing. And now we are here boondocking for a couple days. We're gonna do some work here and make up for our playtime with some work time. I'm gonna do some food prepping today and I'm gonna use my Thermos Shuttle Chef, which is a thermal cooker. I did showcase this on one of our recent grocery shopping episodes and it got some good buzz going. People are a little curious on what it is and how the heck it works. And I'm gonna show you what I know about it. So basically, it is a thermos, it's a vacuum thermos, and it uses heat to cook instead of continued energy or propane. So it's basically like a crock pot that you don't need to plug in. So when you open the lid up, inside you have some inside vacuum thermoses. Let me get these out and show you how it stacks together. This is the main compartment. You can either use one big pot like this, or you can have a two tier like this and have two different things cooking at the same time. Now the biggest rule of thumb for this is it needs to be at least 75 to 80% full with a lot of moisture like water so that you can have that to retain heat. If you don't have it full enough or hot enough, when you set it aside, then it won't work. So you need to get all of your ingredients in, bring it to a boil, and that beginning time when you bring it to an initial boil is the only time that you'll need to use energy. So we will be using our induction oven to bring our contents to a boil, and then we're gonna transfer it to our propane to simmer it, and then once it's good and boiled and simmered all the way through, then you put it in the sleeve, you set it outside, and you just let it do its thing. This can keep food hot for up to eight hours, and the beauty is it will not overcook your food. So you can do this in the morning, and then set it aside, and then have a nice hot meal ready for dinner, the same way you would use a crock pot for. And being in a van, we love that it can just go outside and out of our space in here while not drying energy and not something that I have to work around all day because my counter space is truly limited and my floor space so I wouldn't want it on the floor either. So today I'm going to make some shredded chicken. I haven't really experimented with meat in my cooker. I've done a lot of grains. I've done a lot of rice which is awesome because brown rice takes like 45 minutes on the stovetop and with this, it takes five minutes on the stove top and then you just set it outside and it finishes off. So with the pandemic that's going on, I've been a little hesitant to experiment with cuts of meat or anything because I don't want to waste food and I don't want to go to the grocery store more than necessary. So I'm finally feeling confident and I'm going to start with shredded chicken because that's kind of a really easy thing you can't mess up. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to do shredded chicken. I have two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I have some San Marzano tomatoes. And I'm gonna do onion, garlic, a little bit of vinegar, and some dried seasoning. I am going to take an extra step and I'm going to saute my onion and my garlic before putting everything together and bringing it to a boil. You could very easily skip this first step of sauteing but I have the energy today. I'm feeling like I'm in a good mood to put in the extra effort. So I'm gonna do that. Um, if you don't want to, just skip that, throw it all together and start from there. So I'm gonna get my induction stovetop started, which I can do right from my phone. We recently did a battery electrical inverter system upgrade, everything. So now that we're boondocking, we can just turn on our power and our outlets with the click of an app and it's seriously life-changing, you guys. So Aaron and I are able to boondock comfortably for the first time ever, and it's just 
it just changes things so much. So I'm going to get this started, get the onions rocking, throw everything together. We're going to see how it fits in here because one thing I'm not sure of is once I get all these contents in, how high up will it go? And if I have room, I'm going to use the second tier and I'm going to do some brown rice on top. If I don't have room, then I'm just going to have the chicken in there. And I also wanted to mention these oven bags. You can use these to put your meats in, your roasts, and things like that. If you don't have enough simmering liquid to fill this up and you don't want to dilute your meal with water, like I don't want to be poaching this in extra water. I just want to be using the flavors. So another option is you pour your contents into here. You triple knot your bag and then you fill the rest of the thermos with water to get you to that 75 to 80 percent and then you're not diluting your food with water. So these are something to have on hand. I'm going to be practicing with these as I get more into roasts like beef roasts and pork roasts and things that I really want to retain their flavor and shape with. So back to the app. So this app I just pulled right up you click right into your inverter. We chose Victron for our inverter and we chose Battleborn for our lithium batteries and we are so happy with everything. If you're interested in seeing more on that, check out our full installation video that we'll link here and you can see our entire system and how Aaron switched it out and upgraded what we have. So you just click on that and then on And now we're live, so let's get to it. I'm using my 11 inch scan pan. I'm gonna put in just a touch of the oil. I'm gonna get my onions going for a few minutes and then I'll put the garlic in for a minute or so. And this is really just to develop those flavors of the onion and the garlic. Um, it's an extra step. So always measure your oil. If you are going to skip the sauteing step, then skip the oil as well and just throw it all into your crock pot or your thermal cooker, whatever you're using without the oil. Always measure your oil. Those fat calories, even if it's a healthy fat, adds up very quickly. If you're free pouring, you might be surprised at what you're actually adding in. So some of the reasons why I choose to use the induction when I have propane right here is number one, the counter space saving. You can see all of this room I'm still able to use while just like narrowing down your skillet area. So space is number one. Um, speed is number two. It brings it up to heat much quicker than my propane does. So that's especially important on why we're going to use it to bring it to a boil. Um, third reason is you do save propane. So if you're plugged in at an RV park, why wouldn't you plug in and use free electricity rather than burning your propane? Another good reason is heat. It's pretty comfortable right now, but we were just in Phoenix where it was 105 degrees. And when you're in front of propane, it gets so hot in here. So those are like four great reasons on why I choose to use my induction oven whenever possible. This onion was leftover. It was about a um, three quarters of a large onion. You could use half an onion. You could use a full onion, depending on the size, whatever you have. Um, one boondocking trick that I learned. I, I like to really chop up my onions and discard the onion papers and stuff while I still have access to a garbage because if you've ever prepped an onion and then had it sitting in your garbage for a couple days it really does smell up your living area. So I like to try to eliminate any, it's not a foul smell but it's not pleasant you know like so try to get rid of any waste you can before you're out in the middle of nowhere and that way you're just more comfortable while you're here. The onions have been sauteing for a couple minutes, probably three minutes, and they're starting to get a little bit golden. They're starting to get translucent. They're seeping out some moisture. They look beautiful, smell amazing. I'm gonna add in the garlic next. This is a good six cloves of finely minced garlic. I love garlic. So get that in. Mix it around. Always be careful not to burn your garlic. If you have this nice bed of onions in there, that definitely helps prevent that. 
I'm also going to add my spices in. This is a mix of thyme, oregano, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. The salt, I have a, I have a good ratio that I use one teaspoon of salt with one pound of meat and that usually does the trick for me every single time. I'm using two pounds of meat today, so I did actually scale back the salt a little bit because there is sodium in your canned tomatoes. So always be mindful of you know the salt in your canned products if you do have sodium in there. Just be aware of it and scale it back. And these tomatoes, actually have basil in it so I skipped putting basil into my dry mix I might do that you know excuse me that red chili pepper is choking me I'm turning the heat down <coughs> a little bit I'm gonna get my tomatoes open and I'm just gonna put my tomatoes in there too while I'm at it so these San Marzano tomatoes are awesome I've talked about them I think it was in my mozzarella chicken recipe I talk about San Marzano tomatoes they're grown in special Italian soil that just makes them less bitter and tastes more flavorful these are whole if I was at an RV park or at home where I had unlimited water I'd get up in there and just crush it with my hands get those tomatoes hand crushed since I am watching my water and everything I'm going to take my shears and just kind of slice them with my shears I use these shears a lot. It's great because you eliminate the need for a cutting board. So I use them a lot for cutting up prepped chicken and things like that when I want to get them into smaller pieces. But yeah, I love these tomatoes and you could use diced tomatoes, you could use tomato puree, you could use a jar of marinara. You could really just find whatever you have in your cabinets and roll with it. And that's why I chose this recipe because it's super versatile and forgiving. Okay. And this is about as far as prepping we need to go. So now, turning that off, I'm going to put it into my larger thermos and see what amount of space I'm working with. This is literally my first time. Oh, I forgot. I'm also putting in some vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar. You could use red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. It's just going to help give it a little pop. This is my very first time doing this dish, so we're experimenting together. I think it's going to end up filling the entire space though. And I think we won't have room for a rice tier. We'll find out. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. So just pour in some of it just to cover the bottom. There's a lot of similarities between this and crock pot cooking. And I haven't used my crock pot for years since we lived in an apartment chicken breasts. I also wanted to use this recipe because we have these honkin' chicken breasts, which they take a really long time on the stovetop. If you were to um, like cook these whole on a stovetop, that would take forever and it'd be really hard to cook through. Okay, actually we might have room for the rice. It smells really good. Another reason I really, really like shredded chicken, we have diced chicken a lot. So it's nice to switch up the way that you're eating. So instead of having diced sauteed chicken, mix it up, have some shredded chicken. I actually haven't had shredded chicken since the chicken ropa recipe I did last year in Florida. It was really good. So shredded chicken is great for a lunch prep item because it sits in the moisture all week and you can't dry it out. And a lot of people don't like chicken as a food prep item because it gets dried out. 
<laughs> and that's probably, I think a lot of people overcook chicken initially. So on day one, it starts to dry. And then by day three or four, it's like horrendous. So if you're one of those people that overcooks your chicken or you think chicken is dry, try really improving your cooking technique so that you're not drying it out on day one and see if that helps the way it tastes to you throughout the week. All right, so this chicken mixture goes up to about here. I have this much free space. I don't know if you can see in there. I also measured out like this top lid is about my finger to my knuckle. So I think that we're going to be able to fit some rice on top. And I'm going to try to push it because if I don't put that rice on top, this is not enough for it to cook by itself. So if I didn't add the rice, I would have to transfer this to a bag and then add water. And I don't want to waste water. So I might as well put it into the form of some rice, which we need anyway. And it would serve really well with this. And that's the whole idea of having the two tier is you can have rice on top, your entree on the bottom and just dish it up. So I did just clean up a little bit because we are switching into stovetop mode. Ah, um, so this amount in here, I think is perfect. Put it on your stovetop and just put it on high, put a lid on it. And we're gonna bring that, we're gonna bring that to a rapid boil. Once it's at a rapid boil, then we're going to transfer it over and simmer it just a little bit longer. Because those chicken breasts are so big, you really want to make sure that the internal temperature is stable before you transfer it to thermal cook outside. If you rush that boiling and simmer stage, it won't work and it will lose heat and you'll have to reboil it and redo that step. So while this is coming to a boil, I'm going to get my rice layer ready. and. You could use this layer for like a chicken, a double chicken layer if you want to do like the tomato on the bottom and then just say like jerk chicken on top, something like that so that your food prep has variety. I I would do that. If, I, if this comes successful, that's probably something that I'll do um, next time is just do some different flavor varieties in each tier. So the rice, you just want to do the same portions that you always do. I think I'm going to do like a cup and a half of rice and then three cups of water. However you like to make your rice, if you like to use chicken stock or vegetable stock or um, if you do the bone broth with your rice, you can get some protein in your rice. Alright, so that liquid comes up to here and as this cooks, those rice kernels are gonna fluff out and I know that that's gonna like be hitting the lid. So let's get this. Both layers you wanna bring to a boil. So that's it, I'm gonna let this come to a boil, transfer it over here to simmer, and this is gonna come to a boil. And when they're done, I'll stack them up and we'll bring it outside. We've been simmering for five minutes, so we're going to turn this off, turn this off. You really want to move quickly here because you don't want to lose any of your heat as you transfer it. So have your exterior shuttle nearby and get into your big one. And then you want to be careful, remove your lid and drop in your smaller one and that's it shut it up we're going to carry this outside there is a lock position for the lid so as i drop this outside i'm just going to have it in the lock position set it outside out of the way so that it's not anywhere where we're going to kick it but that's it guys um it's like 10 45 in the morning right now so i'd say like seven hours eight hours going to bring us right up till dinner time and then we'll check it out later and see how nicely it shreds up. All right, just over here. That's it. It's time, moment of truth. 
Wait, what time is it right now? Let's see. 6.15, so it's been seven and a half hours. I haven't touched it, and we'll see what it looks like. Starting with the rice layer. Actually, I'm going to try to grab the whole thing. Out. It smells good. Do you smell that? Mm -hmm. fork. I'm going to need some shredding forks anyway. It's still hot, which is pretty amazing. The rice, I wasn't concerned about the rice at all. This looks perfect. Steamy, not overcooked. Awesome. Next. Okay, so this is clean, so the amount that I had in there worked really well. It smells so good in here. I guess what I'm looking for now is just to make sure that the chicken is cooked through, and then also how well it shreds up. Mmm. Looks good. Awesome, it turned out great. I'm super happy with it. This is what the inside looks like. If you remember, I had three large breasts in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the breasts out over here, I'm gonna shred it, and then with this mixture that's in here, I'm going to use my immersion blender and I'm gonna get it nice and smooth. And then that way my, um, my shredded chicken has a nice smooth sauce to go into and it's going to be nice and saucy. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode using our thermal cooker. Um, if you have a thermal cooker or have used one, let me know. Let me know what your favorite recipes are or if there's something that you think would work really, really good in this, let me know and I'll test it out. And thanks so much for watching. Hit that like, hit that subscribe and catch us next time. Bye.